Hey y'all, it's Kim Hosey here at the Shiloh Museum. I'm standing here with our 1880s apple peeler, and today I'm going to give you a little demonstration about how this apple peeler works. With three turns of the handle, you would be able to completely core and peel your apple. You start off by placing the apple on the three prongs. Then as you turn the handle, the razor blade would cut off the skin of the apple and the corer would then take the core out of the middle of the apple. Apple peelers were used because they made the process of peeling and coring apples more efficient. Apples became a very popular crop around the early 1880s when you have the first railroad coming through Northwest Arkansas. Because of the railroads, people were now able to ship their apples all across the country instead of hauling them by wagon. One of the reasons why apples were such an important crop is because you could eat them in so many different ways. You could bake them into a pie, eat them fresh, you could even drink them as a cider. Or, if you want to preserve them and save them for later use, you could send them off to a cannery or evaporator plant. Another important thing about shipping your apples on the trains is that some railroad cars were actually refrigerated, which means they were able to keep your apples cool while they are being transported from one place to another. Around this time period, you also see the rise in other products associated with the apple industry. For example, barrels. This is Judy Costello. I'm the education manager at the Shiloh Museum of Ozark History. I'm filming from home today due to the coronavirus. But I was able to bring our education staff's 1889 apple peeler home with me so I could do these video clips. There is one in, on exhibit at the Shiloh Museum, but this one we're able to take out to schools. Thanks for joining us. So I need to count the number of teeth on this gear right here. And notice how this gear is solidly connected to this gear that we will count next. So to do that, I have made a chalk mark right here. And I'm just gonna, I've marked them off in counts of 10, but let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Here's another set of ten. So we're up to twenty. Another set of ten gives us thirty. And then this was our starting point. So we are at 30, one, two. 32 teeth on this gear. So I'm going to count, count the number of teeth on the gear that I call the handle gear. So I have started right here and counting by tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84. So we've counted what I call the medium gear, which is here. 
what I call the handle gear, which is here. Now zooming in on what I call the spindle gear here, which is connected to the spindle that turns the apple. I put a mark right here. This one's kind of hard, but let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, let me change hands, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen teeth on the spindle gear. Now to count the teeth on this large gear here. So if you'll notice this large gear, the teeth actually mesh with what I call the medium gear, which is solidly connected to the handle gear. And the handle gear is driving the spindle gear. So let's go up and see if we can count the teeth on this big gear, the large gear. All right, so we're gonna start right here and we're gonna count by tens. So here's one ten. So ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, can't see my six very well, seventy, My eight got marked off with the oil. Eighty. Not a very good nine, but ninety. And then counting the individual teeth because we don't have a whole set of ten. Ninety one, two, three, four, five, six. So ninety six teeth on the large gear. Now zooming in on the back of the apple peeler to this big gear that does controls most of the work, most of the movement of this shaft up here, which turns the, the razor blade here, which peels the apple, and the knife here, which cores the apple. So we're gonna look at this big gear right here. So there is a knob on this big gear right here and it slides through this curved slot right here and as it slides through because that slot goes outwards it's pulling this shaft to the left. Then there is a curly cue, I call it, on this main gear. And it goes between these two notches right here. So as the curly cue goes through those notches, it continues to pull that shaft to the left. You can see the, the knobs here with this curly cue that curves into the center of the gear. So that shaft is following, being pulled over to the, le the left, which is pulling the knife into the apple so it can core it. Right here, that same knob is going to hit this bar which is connected to the shaft and push everything this time to the right. Which is moving the peeler, the razor blade and the knife out of the apple. And then the apple would fall off into the basket. 
Now, being an engineer, I love math. And so I want to do a little math. And I want to know how many times do I have to turn the handle to peel and core an entire apple. So I know, I remember that the medium gear was connected directly to the large gear. The large gear is the one that makes the entire process work. So for every time that the large gear goes around one time, how many times do I have to turn this handle? The large gear is the one that's making, peeling and coring my apple. So I need the gear ratio of the large gear to the medium gear. So that would be the large gear to the medium gear. And the large gear has 96 teeth and the medium gear has 32 teeth. If I do that division, it takes three times for the medium gear to go around to make the large gear go around one time. And that peels and cores the entire apple. So that medium gear is permanently connected to the handle. They rotate or move together. The handle gear is the one that's directly connected, meshed with the spindle gear, which is the one that's spinning and turning the apple or turning the apple. So I need the gear ratio between the handle gear and the spindle gear. So if I write the ratio of the handle to the spindle, and plug in the numbers. The handle has 84 teeth. The spindle has 14 teeth. And I do that division. I get that the ratio of the handle to the spindle, 84 divided by 14, is six. So every time the handle goes around one time, the spindle spins six times. So one crank of the handle turns the spindle six times. The entire process requires me to turn the handle three times. Therefore, the entire process turns the spindle three times six or 18 times.